going on YouTube? Culture Dog Sam Hatch back with another video. And uh, I had mentioned in my previous one that I'd been laid low a little bit, but back up and at them a little bit. Finally catching up with some more uh, flicks and uh, new stuff. I'm going to be doing some more uh, spotlight reviews coming up shortly. But figure in the meantime, I'll show you what I picked up over the past month or so. And uh, I uh, was not feeling great during Black Friday proper, but I did actually trip across uh, a store on the Saturday after. And I was like, well, there's a couple of good Blu-rays here, so I might as well pick those up and all sorts of other good stuff. So let's tear into the stash of uh, all sorts of media pickups I've been getting lately. And uh, we'll go through some CDs first, because I did happen to grab some recently. And um, with Spectre coming out recently, I figured I would uh, fill in some of the gaps in my James Bond collection. And for some reason, even though I had um, pretty much, I think I had the Moby track on this, and I had uh, the, the two main kind of vocal pieces from it, but I never had the proper soundtrack from David Arnold. So I grabbed the Tomorrow Never Dies soundtrack, uh, used, of course, for a reasonable price, and uh, yeah, I still think I like the Katie Lang song better than the Sheryl Crow song, but what are you going to do? And uh, I, this I had to get, it's been on my list for a while, and it was one of the releases that did not get uh, reissued when they came out with the Bond remastered uh, CDs because of rights issues, and uh, I figured, hmm, I should hunt down the old vintage MCA records version of License to Kill, the original soundtrack. And uh, it is uh, annoyingly loaded with like source music and stuff like that. Some of the the tunes like you know "Dirty Love" and all that aren't that amazing. But there's some cool Michael Kamen score material in there, so I forgot I had to pick that up. And uh, while I was in the midst of my James Bond completionist period, I uh, finally hunted down a copy of the German two-song single of Chris Cornell's You Know My Name from Casino Royale. There's a, a British pressing of this that has a, I want to say like a live version or an acoustic version of, uh, maybe it's like Spoon Man or Black Hole Sun or something like that. But I wanted to get the version that has two separate versions of You Know My Name. It's got the rock version, which is the version I believe he put on his album, and then the pop mix, and even though the pop mix is more an orchestral mix, and it's a lot closer to the mix that's in the finish, finished version of the film, um, everybody's still, uh, you know, at arms about whether or not there is an officially released version of the film uh, mix. But I don't think there technically is. So I figured I would hunt down one of the missing gaps in my collection that theoretically had the film mix, and that is the. Best of Bond, James Bond collection from 2008. And technically, I didn't really need this because I've got the original 1992 uh, version and I've got the 50th anniversary double disc. But I figured I would get this uh, with the DVD bonus disc. And somebody said that it has the, the actual film mix version of You Know My Name. But I, don't, I think it's just got a different mix of the pop mix. But whatever, I've got it. And it's got a John Arnold bonus track doing the James Bond theme, and the DVD with View to a Kill, For Your Eyes Only, Golden Eye, The Living Daylights, and All Time High, and uh, Shirley Bassey at Royal Albert Hall in 1974, and The Bound Sound, the music of 007, a documentary, which I think was just ripped right from the uh, kind of John Cork documentaries that were on the the DVDs that came out in the late 90s, and have been that those features keep getting reissued. But I forget to pick this up. Just to be that guy. I to have like every version of every James Bond thing. So I grabbed that and uh, I had to get the single for the new single, Sam Smith, Writings on the Wall. This has the uh, instrumental version, which I believe is the same one that's on the Spectre soundtrack and the, uh, the vocal track. And of course I had to get this because it's not on this, the Spectre soundtrack, uh, which does have the, the instrumental version, but not the vocal track. They, it's weird. They did that with um, Casino Royale as well. And uh, I believe, yeah, Skyfall too. Quantum of Solace was the only one that actually came with the title, or not title track, but opening number. And uh, I got a couple of metal things too. Some of these things I might have shown in previous videos, so I apologize if I'm double dipping. But uh, way late to the party on this one. It's a problem with having digital copies of things. Sometimes it takes me a while to go out and actually support the band, so I apologize for being a slacker. Overkill, White Devil Armory. Great band, one of the best uh, unsung thrash bands. I mean, obviously, they got a lot of fans, but they're never quite uh, 
as popular as the big four, of course, but uh, killer release, really good stuff. I got the bonus tracks version with a couple bonus tunes. Had to get the new Clutch. Clutch is uh, by far one of the best live bands on the planet, and they've been really bringing it uh, with their studio releases as well. So Psychic Warfare, new stuff from them, and very, very good. This will tie in nicely with the uh, with the Blu-rays because this is a Blu-ray CD double set of uh, Slayer's new one, Repentless. It's got a Blu-ray of uh, Vakken, live at uh, Vakken Open Air in 2014. So uh, pretty good stuff. And Gary Holt from Exodus playing guitar, still on that. So really good smoke and live performance. What else we got in Blu-ray town? Well... I've uh, been also filling in more gaps on my Lost collection, and I uh, just happened to trip across a, a uh, used copy of Season 4 for uh, Wicked Cheap, so I finally picked that up. So I think I've got Seasons 1 and 2 on DVD, so I need to get those on Blu-ray, and then I'll be all set. But uh, So I grabbed that, and this I've been meaning to pick up, wow, ever since it got released, but it was cheap. Uh, Interstellar, I got the one that comes with a 70mm uh, film piece, which always bums me out because, I mean, they actually cut apart a 70mm print of a film uh, in order to make it, but, yeah, what are you going to do? You're going to buy it. That's what you're going to do. So I'm glad to finally have that sucker. And uh, this I got for 9 bucks. I had been slacking on picking it up, so, uh, man, many apologies to my old self from you know, a couple months previous for missing out of the opportunity to watch this 30 times already but uh, mad max fury road still holding up there as my favorite film of the year we'll see how things shake down in the next couple of weeks uh maybe a few contenders coming down the pike but look forward to checking that out and all the special features um i also picked this up for six bucks uh dawn of the planet of the apes saw this in the theaters really enjoyed it and uh, thought it picked up quite nicely from the previous film and a lot of special features on there so uh, looking forward to spinning that in my home theater uh what else we got i don't think i reported back on this in the the previous update but if i did uh, again apologies but uh shane caruth's film upstream color i picked up finally and he is the director of the apparently this is really good i still haven't seen it but the equally great um primer or as uh, i call it primer but uh if you haven't seen that film uh, get it the dvd is i think still out of print and really uh, expensive but really good uh film about time travel that will you know bend your mind for all eternity uh, and then i got a bunch of horror stuff in the horror season which i didn't really report to you guys on and i didn't get to watch these for my uh, horror challenge so i figured i'll show you what i had picked up dead snow 2 red versus dead and uh i still need the first one on uh blu-ray i just watched it on streaming a couple of years ago so um I finally grabbed Grindhouse. Wow, yeah, I know. I can't believe I didn't have the... Uh, I've got the steelbooks of the individual films, but I wanted to get the uh, the Blu-ray with the, with the actual slipcover. I actually bought this, and it came from Best Buy without the slipcover, just like this, with no discs inside. <laughs> so that was my first attempt at picking this up, and then I just kind of gave up on it. It was uh, just strolling around a store and saw it pretty cheap with the actual slipcover. So I was like, let me grab that. Um, finally grabbed Ty West's House of the Devil, which was shot here in Connecticut. So looking forward to finally sitting down and checking that out. And uh, somebody actually turned this in locally. The uh, Warner Archive Collection issue of The Hunger. And a Warner Archive Collection is pretty cool because on Blu-ray, they're actually pressing blu-rays of the films unlike the dvds where they have give you dvd copies of uh the films and uh since insidious 3 came out on home video i figured i'd get up to date and pick up insidious 2 or insidious chapter 2 i still don't have three on blu-ray yet but one of these days i'll grab that pardon me also uh picked up it follows finally grabbed it with a slip cover so again another one i've been meaning to get for quite some time uh, picked up Mama for next to nothing, so uh, it's a pretty cool flick. And I've got my own laser disc, but I had to get the director's cut on Blu-ray as well with a lot of special features. Night of the Creeps, Fred Decker flick, Tom Atkins rules in it. It's awesome, so I uh, highly recommend getting that if you're a fan of campy 80s cinema. Speaking of 80s cinema, Return of the Living Dead, I got this uh, interesting uh, version. I think I picked this up at FYE 
with a uh, different artwork. It, I believe it's just the exact same previous uh, 20th Century Fox pressing. And in fact, it's got the same artwork on the inside. So I think they just you know, made a new slip cover and called the day. But um, it says 2015, but I don't think any of the, the features on it are new. But I could be wrong. I'll check that out and get back to you. Um, let's see. I also got, yeah, nobody liked this film, but for the heck of it, Shutter got for like two or three dollars at uh, a big lots. And uh, yeah, we'll check it out, see how horrible it is. But, and I also grabbed, actually, I like quite enjoy this in the theaters Kate Hudson in the Skeleton Key with uh, Peter Sarsgaard as well. Uh, yeah, cool thriller. It's got some uh, supernatural esque elements to it. And I've been hearing a lot of buzz about this, so I figured I'd pick it up too. We are still here. Again, another one I uh, need to sit down with. And ooh, I have a DVD slipped in here. Picked this up, I think, a bit glots too. Uh, the Takashi Shimizu flick called Tormented. And uh, I still have yet to see this. So it's one of his uh, newer ones. I believe this was uh, released in 3D in Japan as well. And it's got a creepy uh, like Easter Bunny type, or just creepy rabbit type character. So uh, following on the heels of Donnie Darko and creepy rabbits. Figured I had to get that. And uh, what else? Oh, shout outs to John Froelich if you're uh, watching, buddy. Had to get Rush R40 Live. This is the uh, Blu-ray with three CDs as well. So I'll be doing a proper uh, spotlight review on that sucker. And uh, what else? I got The Habit ex Extended Edition of The Battle of the Five Armies. I'll be doing a uh, spotlight review of that shortly as well, too. And uh, likewise, I got a review copy of The Brain That Wouldn't Die. So we'll be doing a spotlight review of that in a hot minute. And uh, yeah, just today, Ant-Man. So... Looking forward to uh, checking out all the special features on this guy, too, and reporting back to you guys. So I'll be uh, talking about all that stuff very soon. And, oh, I guess this counts as media. I went to go see my favorite uh, comedian who had come through town, Dan Cummins. And he was through a few weeks ago. And apparently he decided to uh, make a children's book based on uh, some of his uh, twisted musings that he's been closing his shows with over the past year or so. But it's a uh, children's book for adults. <laughs> it's called Daddy Bear. Three rabbits meet the real world. Really, really nasty, uh, nasty stuff. So I got him to sign it for me. That was cool. And, uh, highly recommend picking it up. I think you can get a, uh, a version, uh, on like the Kindle or something for like four or five bucks. So I don't even know if you can buy the, uh, the printed copies anywhere else yet, but, uh, yeah, check out Dan Cummins, uh, comedy. He was just on Conan the Brian a couple weeks ago and, uh, really great stuff. So I think that's about it for my media, what I've picked up in the past couple weeks. Uh, we'll uh, talk about some individual releases and all that stuff next. So hope you guys had fun spinning through the, uh, the pile of goodies. Now I have to find somewhere to store all this stuff. So I'm sure I'll figure something out. Talk to you soon. Cheers.